When I came into this room this morning, I saw that they had designed this beautiful title slide for me, a slide which I really did not prepare for. Yet, something more important than a beautiful title slide is a blank slide, a slide with nothing on it, a blank canvas where you have to decide where to put everything. Perhaps the words on the left, the pictures on the right, or a giant ink blob in the middle for an important presentation. And yet, it is these decisions that you make when doing up slides that also represent decisions that you can make in your life. Now, and decisions in life can also be represented by your path, the path that you decide to take. Now, this poem, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the road less traveled, and that has made all the difference. Now, this is a famous poem by Robert Frost, a poem which I'm sure many of you here today are familiar with, The Road Not Taken. Now, many people use this poem to float around their independence of being unique, or perhaps have rubbed their own ego for finding a rare, unique path in life that has made them who they are, that has made them successful. But it is also this poem, but they fail to look at the two lines before this poem. It says, I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Now, these two lines reflect hindsight, and when combined, the poem says, two roads divert, when combined, the poem says, I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence that two roads diverged in a path, and I, I took the road less traveled, and that has made all the difference. Now, within this, the poet doesn't reflect the unconventional path that he took, but instead, he says that he made a decision that day, a decision to take that path that he took. He said, hey, I took that path that day, I stuck to my values, I stuck to what I believe in, and it is this path that has made me who I am today. And he took the unconventional path, the road less taken, and it is this unconventional path that, by definition, is the lonelier path. Yet, many times today, people often... Yet, many times today, we all crave for companionship and, to an extent, desire for it. It is within all our genetic codes. Now, strength in numbers, they say, a means of survival or security, or perhaps just wanting to be affirmed and validated by others and be part of something bigger, a society, a community. And within this, we oftentimes compromise on our ideals and conform our practices just to fit in, to not, be to not be weird in the eyes of others, to not be left out, and to an extent even ostracized. Now, around the world, there exists this phenomenon, cultural homogenization. Now, in essence, that is when many unique cultures around the world all merge and become one homogenous global culture. Now, unfortunately, this causes many cultures to be lost as they all merge to become one. People's own unique traditions, their own sense of identity, to be lost as they want to be part of something bigger. And this holds true for society today, that we compromise our ideals to, not, to avoid conflict, to be part of a, com a community and part of something bigger. Now, there's also something else that most of us here have in common. Fun. We all want to have fun. We all want to enjoy ourselves. And it is my belief that if you don't find the fun in something, if you don't enjoy yourself, there's really no point doing it. Life is too short to be slogged through, to be dragged into mundanity and, re and repetitiveness. And even if you're forced to do something, you should find the fun in it. Enjoy yourself. Now, in the words of Mary Poppins, in every task you undertake, in every job that must be done, there's an element of fun. You find the fun and snap, the job's a game. Now, I'm sorry, I can't sing, that was quite bad. But it was fun, and that's what matters, right? Now, finding fun, even in small things, even in things that you enjoy, can be something simple, the way you dress. Now, back in 2015, there was a model United Nations conference. Now, at this conference, I registered independently, not with my school. So, in that sense, I couldn't wear my school blazer. I had to go buy my own blazer. So, I went shopping, I dragged my feet through shopping because it's shopping. And, well, I found this pastel pink blazer. So immediately, I decided to pick it up. Not because I liked pink at that time. I wasn't too fond of the color, but because it was fun. And because it, made, it was fun, and it just made a joke out of everything. To stand out amongst the traditional black and blue suits of many, and to just wear a pink blazer. Now, I knew many would laugh. I knew many would joke at me, but to be able to laugh with them is very important. And this, pink, this pastel pink blazer has become something different. Now, it has become this glorious, brighter pink blazer, and instead now carries a message. 
to not care what others think for you, to not let others judge you, and to do things your way, how you want to do them. And in the process, to have some fun, have a good laugh. Now, something bigger. So I had the privilege to serve as the Secretary General for OnePeople.sg Model United Nations, OP1 2017. And when organizing the event, we went through the regular conference logistics. We, we bought the logistics, we planned the conference, operations plan, manpower deployment, etc., etc. The boring stuff. But there was something missing, our own spark. Something that we brought to the conference that no other secretary would bring. So we did this in two very distinct ways. Now, the first, the sledge gavel. A giant 36 inch, 10 kilograms, to put it bluntly, hammer. There it is. So traditionally in conferences, the Secretary General gives a speech and opens the conference with the banging of a gavel. And we did that. But we used the sledge gavel instead of a small traditional gavel, as you can see. Now, we did it for symbol. We said that it was done for symbolism's sake, for to do to use a bigger gavel to represent the conference growing. But let's be real. This was done completely for fun, and out of all the ridicule that it would bring. And because of this, the conference we used it to market the conference. That we'd be using a giant sledge gavel instead of a traditional gavel to open the conference because of how big it became. But it was completely a lie and all for fun and the ridicule that all of us had and it was a smashing hit. <laughs> yeah. So, something else that we did. Traditionally in conferences, roses are sold where delegates can buy them, send them to each other with customized notes. It's kind of sweet, kind of cute. But we did something completely different. We sold bags of salt instead. So, delegates, delegates insult to each other, and it got quite crazy. We customized notes, we just had more, and more, and more salt. And it got to the point that we even had to restock on salt midway through the conference. Like, imagine you have precious manpower that you need to organize the event, you need to run the event smoothly, and yet you have to deploy them to go buy more salt for people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I like to think that it is with these unconventional innovations, it is through these ways that we marketed the conference, that the conference grew. We had over 250 participants, and the size essentially quadrupled. Nine school delegations, many, many schools across Singapore, all represented. And because of these unconventional innovations, it drew people to it. And this conference is still talked about to this day, even though it's been more than seven months since it happened. But something simpler, education, something all of you can relate to. Now, all of us here have our own ways of learning things, our own unique ways. And in that, in that essence, we could all be said to take our own unconventional path to learning. And that's good. Embrace that. But the difference is what motivates us. And it is this means of motivations that oftentimes causes us to conform and compromise just to be with others. Perhaps a group activity, a learning journey, or studying together. You just want to be with others, and that is what you say motivates you, even though it really doesn't. So, <clears throat> something, so we have fun. We find what motivates us, and do things your own way, instead of conforming and compromising to what everyone says. So, this was my chemistry project. So it was a project on photovoltaics where um, instead of spending time researching, instead of spending time doing pretty slides, using illustrations, graphic design, Photoshop, everything, we decided to stick to the basics and use paint because it was more efficient, it was fun, and well, it was fun. So, and when looking at everyone else's project after we submitted ours, well, we didn't feel too good that we kind of compromised our grades a bit just to have fun. But surprisingly, we did well. And accordingly, this was because that it was memorable. Because that it was fun, we, were en we, we enjoyed ourselves, and we did things our own way. We didn't stick to the norms. We didn't stick to how it should be done. We did it. We owned it. We took ownership of it. Now, I tested this again with an English project. Now, this was a reflection done. 
Um, so after cloning myself, spending an entire day filming, changing clothes, making my own band, becoming a stand-up comedian, becoming the interviewer and the interviewee, yep, this was the product of it. I interviewed myself because I took the word reflection, literally, and interviewed my own reflection. <laughs> now, the content wasn't there, again, but it was fun, it was memorable, and accordingly, this project is still used to this day when, they redo, when other students reuse this project as, a, as an example to do things your own way, to be different, and to stand out from the norm. Now, many times in life, we all have our goals to achieve. We want to get from point A, where we are right now, to point B. But, we need, but this journey, this grind of mundanity and repetition, we, we slog through. We hate going through it. This process is oftentimes very tiring even. But if you do things your own way, you start to inherently enjoy it. And when you enjoy something, inher you inherently do better. And you put in your all because it's fun and you enjoy it. So embrace that. Embrace doing things your own way. Have some fun doing it. Enjoy yourself. And instead of perhaps telling it with a sigh and talking about your road, talk, talking about the road that you took that has, that has made the difference with a sigh, you tell it with a sense of triumph, a sense of victory, and most importantly, a sense of ownership that you own it. Thank you.